Come on, get in the truck. Get in the truck. Dylan, get in the truck. This is the funniest thing you've ever seen. Dylan is afraid of horse flies. He just tried to get in the truck because he's got to drive down to the other end of the field. Get in there, you big sissy! I'll drive the tractor, you drive the truck. There's horse flies in here, too. No, there aren't. Yeah, there are. Where? They're in here. No, they're not. There's like 15 over there. Get in the truck, you and big like sis. Like four in the truck. Oh my gosh, they're not gonna bite your head off. Yes, they are. Go. You, you go. Go. I will post this on YouTube in a video by itself. Look how many there are. I don't care. Quit being a sis. You tell me how tough you are. Let's go. Go drive the truck. You got you got more on you than you do anything else. There's one on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> get up! You're gonna get chiggers. Got one on your back. Quit pulling your shirt up. Quit! You're gonna get bit. Go. Go. If you hurry, if you hurry, they're not gonna get you. Hurry! Run, fool! Oh my gosh, they're not gonna bite you, go. Yes, Hurry, get in the truck. The longer you're out here, the more chances you go to get bit. <laughs> go, you big sissy. I dropped my sunglasses somewhere. Well, probably right there where you're rolling around in the chigger nest. Right there. Good God, boy. How are you such a sissy? There's 15 horse flies over there. Drive that thing. God. The attack flies. They're all over. Oh my God, they're biting me. Not. What's the matter? Are you afraid of a horse fly? He doesn't want to get in the truck because there's a there's a horse fly. <laughs> oh my god, look at him. Look at him. I don't know if he realizes there's there's more out there than there is in here. <laughs> Hey, don't you realize there's more horse flies out there than there is in here? <laughs> Stop you it. big sissy. All right, are you boys ready to go? Let's we'll leave. Huh? Let's we'll leave in the truck. No. <laughs> are you going to stay here all night? Yeah. You might have to. I'll ride on the back of the train. No, you're not. Why? Get in the truck. Let's go. No. Nobody will see me if I just hide in between the two things. Yeah, I'll see you. So? <laughs> Come on. You're just about as big as I am. And I don't you're 13 care. years old, and you're the biggest. There's a word for it. I'm thinking. <laughs> Sissy. That's not it, but that's what I'm going to say. Let's go. Why are you recording me? Because this is going to be hysterical. I'll get onto your phone and delete that. There you go. Get in the truck. Here he goes, he's rounding the corner. 
<laughs> get in the truck. There's like 15 on that side. I know, they're on the rim. They're not going to get in. Let's go. They're on the outside, they're on the outside here. I'll even roll up the windows, you big sissy. It's not going to help. Go, get in the truck. Now. I'm riding Now. Get in the truck. Just get in. They're going to stay in here anyway until you get in the truck. They're not going to bother you. Dylan, there's only one back here. Oh, my God. Where's the two-year-old little girl? Now, this is mean. Oh! <laughs> Come on, Dylan, get in the truck! Come on, let's go. Get in the truck. Don't let him in the back. Come on. Fine, we're all set up. <laughs> no, stay there. We're all set up. No, stay back there. Come on. Let's go, Dylan. Come on, get in the truck. Get in the truck. Dylan, get in the truck. Come on. I'm gonna leave you. She's got one on her shoulder right now. <laughs> oh my god, they're gonna get you! <laughs> hey, watch this. <laughs> no! <laughs> get in here, let's go. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop. All right, hey everybody. Guess what? We are finishing up the last couple passes of Plant Team 2020. Me and J Bob, me and Jacob have been out here slaving away all day. Dylan's been here too. Luckily, no horse flies have chased him today. So we didn't get everything planted that I wanted to this year, but we did add we did add about another 150 acres of organic certified ground uh, to our total for where we were at last year. So that's going to give us quite a bit of work to do over the next uh, couple weeks to a couple months, keeping the fields clean keeping weeds out and uh, uh, also foliar fertilizing everything. Uh, we do have another approximately 80 acres that uh, we're going to go ahead and finish cleaning up and start getting ready for 2021 for organic crop production and uh, also maybe uh, picking up quite a few hundred acres that uh, we might be able to get. So more to come on that later. It's kind of going south and east of us, so I might get I might get lucky and dodge a bullet here and uh, and miss most of this rain. And it, when I say it's going to rain, there is a cell on the radar that's about 40 miles wide, and it's all red. 40 miles of all red that goes east and west, probably 100 miles north and south. So it, it's a good chunk of rain. And really, as you can tell, it's not very far away from me at all. Uh, maybe a mile, mile and a half at most. It's close.
Don't you hate it when it rains just enough to knock you out of the field from doing what you need to do, but not enough to do any good for any crops or any hay ground? That's just what we got. We got not even probably a tenth of an inch. Just enough to slug up the baler once, but not enough to do any, anything real good. So, got to call it, call, it, call it quits for the day and then um, try it again tomorrow. Uh, it's not going to take any time at all to dry out. So we'll get that finished, bailed up, and see what else we, what other kind of trouble we can get into. All right, so hey, everybody. It is actually July 5th. Uh, this is down here in the lagoon. Now, you can tell I'm going to have to get in here and row, cul row cultivate this because I am falling behind. You see that big patch of grass right out there. And you can see down here there is some, some weeds coming up. But the beans um are doing pretty good they've been in the ground for they were planted on june 25th so would that be oh about 10 days right yeah 10 10 or 11 days i can't remember how many days were in june but um yeah so the, the these beans are really doing really really good um they got a big jump here so and they look like that across the entire field. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go throw. I've got about seven or eight acres down there we're gonna replant. Uh, nothing did come up there. So we're gonna go throw some extra beans in the ground. And I don't like doing it, but that's just what we gotta do. And uh, I mean, some of these, they're already got the trifoliates coming up. But yeah, you can tell there's a couple patches like that where uh, just patches of thick, thick grass that we're gonna be fighting all year. But I guess that's part of organic farming, right? So I got dad out, uh, got dad out there helping me this this last little bit again. Uh, we've got, like I said, we don't have very many acres left. Uh, being as late as it is, I am planting uh, a pretty high population for me. Now, some people, I've, I don't know, this may be normal routine, but I'm planting up like 180,000 seeds per acre. Um, with this variety in, this, in these conditions where this soil is extremely, extremely fertile, um, I think that's going to be our best bet. And uh, this is the field again that we had 100 bushel an acre soybeans a couple of years ago. Last year we didn't plant it because it was it's low lying area and, and it was wet all year long. We couldn't work it, we couldn't plant it, we could not do anything. Seems like um, now again this this is going to be a field if we can keep this field clean. And I will preface it with that. If we can keep this field clean, this will be probably our best yielding field. Um, being in the ground as short of a period of time as it is, as it's been, these beans already have a big, big jump. Plus, it's warm out, you know, it's in the low 90s. Uh, this soil retains moisture very well. Um, you go down seven or eight inches and it seems like there's always a good uh, moisture bank down there. Um, we are also supposed to be getting rain Thursday. Today's Tuesday, so in the next couple days we're, we're supposed to be getting another rain. I want to get this field real cultivated before then and uh, control the weed pressure as much as possible. I also have a few other fields that I got to get done as well so i want to uh come back in here in another couple days get this field row cultivated um the time leader i think with as much residue as what we have out there in places plus some of the grass being as tall as it is it's not going to be beneficial to run the time leader so i'm going to go ahead and run the row cultivator instead uh, i would like to get this field done prior to the rain coming in the next couple days all right, so guys, I'm out uh, row cultivating, and uh, the field, the previous field that I was 
made video on tine weeding. Um, I'm in right now the one of the bad parts of the field I was I was in where there was quite a bit of grass. But what you're going to be able to see when I turn this camera around is that tine weeder did help with two things. It helped these soybeans get a jump on the bigger broad leaves like the velvet leaf. There was a few that did get left behind. Nothing in organics is ever going to be perfect, so you just you cannot think that way. Uh, there is still some grass out here. We fight foxtail very badly in this field. This is one of, if not the worst, uh, field for foxtail. Um, it's not nearly as thick as what it has been in the past in the rows. Uh, in between the rows, I'm going to show you, I'm knocking all but 100% of those out. Uh, with the with the row cultivator so uh, you know before and after again this is going to be a step process I'm going to compile a video midsummer of all these videos of what they look like so you can kind of see it as as it goes in stages um, but yeah I, this is my first pass with a row cultivator honestly if we get some moisture uh, I don't Think I may not have to uh, make another pass. Um, I'm really hoping I'm not. Again, guys, this is not going to be perfect. This is organic. There's going to be weeds out there. Um, and only making two passes with an implement, it saves on time, saves on fuel. So uh, I'm not pushing one product over another, but the time weeders in general, I. I really do see a benefit to it. Um, this field even had late emergence uh, because we were lacking moisture. Uh, we've only gotten an inch of rain over the last, I think, month and a half. Uh, and they come sporadically, a quarter inch here, a quarter inch there. Uh, so we've not had any significant rain events. We've missed, our fields have missed all of those major rain events. You go a mile to the south, and they picked up an inch and a half the last rainstorm so that's just our little pocket this year we're just missing everything so um, if we're if we are lucky to get any rain these beans are going to be probably canopied over in the next two to three weeks so you can tell that there's quite a bit of grass quite a few weeds out there a few bigger ones like that one right there um, most of everything is still small. Um, like I said, guys, there's going to be weeds, but you can tell where I missed. You can see how big that grass really is compared to areas that I hit. Um, so there is a benefit to a tine weeder. Now, here's the more important thing. This is what it looks like after I go through with the row cultivator. Um, again, it's not going to be perfect but it's going to definitely definitely be uh canopied over here pretty quick and it's even better behind me this is a pretty thin spot here in a few places so uh, now as we go over here on the other side of those that tree line right there um this south field was actually our worst one uh we're gonna get we're, i'll take another video whenever we get up there on the other side of those trees that was our better our better portion of this field all right so i wanted to get out of the tractor here this is on the other side of the tree line i was telling you about i was i was over there before so this is this little pocket i was telling you about a little different soil type uh didn't have near as many clods whenever we were planting but you can tell now this run here is a little bit uh delayed growth uh but you can tell here you know we've got a good jump on these on these weeds um, and then when we're going through with the row cultivator we're knocking everything out so um, you can get down here if I don't cover up the screen kind of see what the height different difference is and then you can also tell like here we missed that foxtail this one we've got some morning glory growing um some of these weeds that were was missed some of the grass that was missed 
with the field cultivator, you can definitely tell um, there is a lot of foxtail coming up. All that should get knocked out by the field cultivator. I keep saying field cultivator, the row cultivator. All of that should get knocked out by the row cultivator. As you can tell, some serious moisture would help us out tremendously. So, all in all, not bad. And uh, things will only get better with time. Yeah, here we're out here in this bean field. And there's still a little velvet leaf, a little bit of foxtail. And the beans are all but canopied in, and you can tell they're about seven, eight inches down from the top of the tire. So uh, down here you can tell that I'm I am pushing them down, but I'm out here row cultivating one time, trying to clean up as much of the weeds and grass as I can. Um, it is August 6th or 7th, one of the two. So they still got about another solid month of good weather that they can grow and put pods on. So I'm pretty happy. This is a lot less grass than I have ever had in this field. A lot less grass and a lot less weeds. Hey guys, I forgot to close out the video, but if you like the content that's on this channel, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.